बोर्ड ज्वाइनिंग लिंक पे आता है मीटिंग इन पर
sir good afternoon welcome yeah good afternoon chandran how are you good sir good hi manish long, welcome long time here uh, yet to meet i'm planning <laughs> to come to office one day yeah you sure sir you are welcome yeah i'm back to new delhi now uh, okay i i went to Cal calcutta for some time then uh, i'm back here in delhi good to so, know that sir like uh, pavitra is there in the call she will take note of that like uh, whenever we are having next opportunity she will contact you sir yes 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 why not mr balaji welcome hello sir good afternoon good afternoon Chandran sir, I was told to ask you one thing regarding social auditor. Yeah, yeah, please. Sir, is that book sufficient that is given that you have shared with us course material that you have shared to us? Uh, if we read that book thoroughly, is that book sufficient to clear the exam? Yeah, yeah. So that book is sufficient, uh, but it's better to watch videos. There are a lot of YouTube videos are there that you can uh, watch. Okay. Uh, and also like uh, the gazette notification like uh, three notifications are there that is also covered in the workbook but uh, you can read uh, once that uh, notification also okay gazette notification okay. yeah thank you sir welcome uh, mr sanjeev good afternoon good afternoon good afternoon Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, you are audible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to see you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Hi, Prashant, welcome. Mr. Jaju, welcome. Mr. Rao, welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Good to see you, sir. <laughs> Same here. Hi, Josna. Welcome. Uh, good, good afternoon. Thank you. Nirajji, welcome. Good to see you, sir. Mm -hmm. 
मिस्टर गुप्ता वेलकम नीरज इफ यू आर सेइंग समथिंग यू आर नॉट ऑडिबल सर थैंक यू वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू एवरीवन गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून so it's a uh, 230 uh, we are waiting uh, more people uh, to join so uh, more than uh, 50 people are uh, registered for today so let's wait for a few more minutes before start let's come ha aawaz ha aawaz nahi aa rahi yeah come लैपटॉप पे भी क्लास होगा मार वाला चाल था ना आवाज Uh, Mr. Vishwanath, welcome, welcome to the webinar. so saundara uh, saundarya and pavitra can we start or uh, do we need to wait for a few more minutes yeah a few more people have registered sharat but i uh, we will touch base with them in the background we can start the call okay so good afternoon everyone and uh, good to see many of the uh, familiar faces and uh, uh, thank you josna for uh, accepting this invitation and uh, being here my pleasure yeah yeah so so like uh, uh, as you know like uh, we are one of the z assessment agency when uh, our people are uh, doing a quality check so some of the things like observed or while interacting with the uh, uh, zmsms our people observed like a uh, parameter number 20 csr so there are like uh, some um, uh, uh, some kind of a uh, clarification needed so we thought like we will check with the experts then uh, we approached uh, uh, jochna and uh, she accepted a uh, invitation and uh, being here to Uh, answer like uh, any of our queries and also give the background like uh, any okay uh, pavitra like uh, can you manage uh, people when they are not speaking so like at any point of time you can uh, unmute yourself uh, so sometimes like uh, uh, our people background may mute you but uh, you can unmute yourself for uh, just to create a workability that's it okay so uh, as i was sharing like uh, one of the uh, observations made is like this particular parameters particularly when uh, small and uh, uh, medium businesses micro businesses applying for a gold there is a some clarity is needed so we thought like we will have this particular uh, uh, webinar so sandhya can you move on so just to give an uh, introduction uh, about uh, josna and uh, she is having a uh, more than uh, 30 years experience and also she has done like uh, impact assessment of uh, more than uh, 4000 uh, organization and uh, she is also uh, founder of like uh, one of the inspection body uh, which is uh, nabcb accredited uh, and also like uh, uh, her company is like the only company who is uh, working on this uh, uh, 
social uh, uh, impact assessment accredited by NABCB in India as IV. So anything else, Jyotsna, which you want to share about uh, yourself? Yeah, you are unmuted. You need to unmute. Yeah. Yeah. So the only other thing that I'd like to add uh, about my experience is that I have seen CSR from both sides, from the corporate side, that is CSR as seen by the donors, as well as CSR as done by the NGOs. Um, so I, we, when we discuss, we will be sharing both the perspectives on CSR. Yeah. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, just to give an introduction about me, many of the people here, knew, here uh, you know about me and uh, people who doesn't know, I am like one of the director in uh, RSJ Inspection Service. So uh, uh, I run this company for the uh, last uh, 14 years. We are one of the Z assessment uh, agency. Also, we work uh, uh, work like promoting the Z scheme for a uh, 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 whichever way possible, including uh, webinars and physical events. Also, uh, we do uh, conduct some social audits for our uh, export customers. Uh, apart from that, like uh, we are uh, also planning to enter into this uh, our uh, Indian market in uh, CSR area. So that's uh, one idea which we are working on. Working on. Uh, so some of you joined in our uh, previous webinar about uh, how to become a social auditor under uh, uh, NISM certified social auditor. So that is in that record. So that's about me. And uh, you can also feel free to connect me on uh, uh, LinkedIn. So my company's uh, uh, purpose is responsible value creations. So what does that mean here in this context? So the whole context here is like to share knowledge here and which is valuable to the people as you are you are attending it. So the next 80 minutes is we are committed to add value and benefits you from their standing we will have that conversation yeah. so that's the idea uh, about a, a purpose in that context so when i today like uh, what we are going to cover we are going to cover like uh, the basics of uh, csr and some questions and answers so mainly uh, josna going to cover the uh, uh, technical aspects and the critical area I will cover like only the background and context of if it is any questions related to Z that I will cover uh, today's uh, 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 webinar area. So one of the questions like uh, we get, so is the agenda okay? Anything else we need to cover? Anyone? Okay. It should I be perfectly okay. okay. Yeah, thank you, sir. So one of the questions we get uh, uh, when we go to MSME is like, a why we need to have that CSR? Our company is like a small. We don't come under the regulations. Why we are having? So this is like one of the questions many times asked, or many times like uh, people having these questions, but uh, they are not directly asking. But uh, whenever that uh, we are going for a, a implementation as a Z consultant, or uh, when we are going for assessments, when we ask few things, it comes in the background. We always observe this. So uh, I just want to give the background why it's important CSR for MSMEs. So that I will uh, I will take a few moments and uh, cover that. Uh, can you go to the next? Uh, um. So if you see the intent or the vision of the Z scheme is to transform MSMEs national and international champions. So what are that bronze level or silver level? These are all stepping stones to take the company to the next level. So actual making this national and international champions is there in gold parameters. So in the gold parameters, if anyone want to truly call them as a champion, without CSR, no company can use that word or even thinking to use that word in towards that direction. Why it's so? That also uh, I will uh, share. Uh, you may have seen some of the, so the next one is one of the benefit is the ecosystem of the Z certified companies. They see them like uh, their customers, MSMEs customers, MSMEs employees, MSMEs uh, uh, society, see that company as a responsible enterprise. 
so that is also like one of the benefits which we sell or the scheme sells like when we uh, go and uh, promote this particular scheme uh, so we say that after uh, z certifications your company image will see will be seen as a responsible enterprises so for that also some of the things needs to be worked on in the company in this context so some of the parameters going into that direction uh, when that is also when we go into the gold uh, uh, certification yeah next one so if you see in the parameters like uh, from uh, uh, 15 to 20th parameters particularly the 18 parameter technology selection and upgradation or uh, natural resource conservation or corporate social responsibility these parameters created keeping in mind msmes how they can be future ready how they can how they can see what are the things are happening in the ecosystems what are the mega trends are happening how they can prepare themselves though so that they can be competitive today and they can be competitive tomorrow also it's it's a transforming the company for future so that is also one of the intent so for that intent it's very critical to understand this uh, parameters particularly from 15 to 20th in depth and the company who implements with spirit, spirit who wants to take their company they will get that benefit of image of responsible uh, company and also they will truly get an a direction or access to become a national and international champion yeah next if you if you some of you may have watching the uh, news you may have seen uh, recently government of india Uh, issued a one uh, a gazette notification which is related to brsr core so uh, like if you if you watch this particular space sustainability space from the indian government of government point of view national voluntary guidelines given around uh, 10 years back and it has given uh, some guidelines how businesses should run have a responsible business conduct which is given like a uh, 10 years back and 3 uh, years back like uh, brsr guidelines is given and that guidelines initially given for a uh, top 100 companies then it expanded to 250 500 and 1000 companies so they supposed to give a disclosure in brsr so the disclosure is like a voluntary and uh, nobody is uh, going to uh, uh, audit or assess or verify that so that was the uh, thing was happening till uh, may of this year in june one new gazette uh, notifications issued by issued by government of india which said like these are all the brsr core in that they have given a guidelines for top listed 150 companies they are supposed to give a reasonable assurance on the listed kpis that kpis they supposed to follow not only for themselves and also their upstream and downstream supply chain what does that mean this top 150 companies who are is uh, uh, supplying their tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 tier 5 all the suppliers supposed to have the baseline evaluated towards the sustainability parameters the kpi issued so even if one listed company is having a 100 suppliers 150 in the 100 it becomes like so many numbers and many of the tier 2 tier 3 will come msmes also so one aspect is uh, climate change another aspect is social aspects also comes in that particular area so when uh, z scheme is asking the same towards in the parameter number 18 or 19 or 20 that is also whatever is happening in the brsr or even european uh, standards uh, european sustainability reporting standard that is also required so for example if you are uh, exporting so many of you might know that like uh, even 20 years back social audit started uh, uh, in india and it has taken to much deeper level now they are going into the sustainability reporting so even if you are uh, if our uh, people like who are that msm is involved in uh, uh, exports or they are supplying to uh, european customers or uh, big brands in the uh, us so this is again going to come in the csr aspects also so already our uh, bureau of indian standards um, uh, even iso also issued one uh, uh, guidelines 26000 iso 26000 even bureau of indian standards issued one uh, uh, standard called 20 26001 which is directly uh, related to our uh, uh, ministry of corporate affairs uh, csr rules how to implement 
So this standard, so uh, Bureau of Indian Standards is a indigenous standards. It's a free of cost. Anyone can go and download that particular standard and you can have a, some ideas like how to implement or how to uh, assess that based on the CSR requirements. And uh, uh, that uh, standard is under revision and uh, they are going to issue a uh, first amendment uh, by August or September upcoming times. But that is also available in the wider circulation. After this meeting, uh, like uh, I can, uh, uh, we can create like a uh, one WhatsApp group. Uh, Soundarya or uh, Pavitra, please share one uh, WhatsApp group for uh, people who are uh, attending here. We can share the documents to all of you so that uh, you can have a look on that. Apart from okay. that, yeah, thank you, Pavitra. Apart from that, many of you know United Nations SDG goals. There are uh, 17 goals and uh, India is like one of the signatory in uh, 2015. And uh, we have committed, Soundarya, can you go to the next slide? Uh, yeah, India is committed uh, uh, that we will achieve by 2030 this particular goals. And we are currently one of the bottom 20 percentage contributors in the performance gap. And even if we need to achieve five goals out of the 17, we are supposed to spend more than four and a half lakh crores every year. And only government spending this money is not possible. So that's the reason that CSR uh, started. And apart from that, as a, a society, as a uh, Indian society, we always believe in contributing to others uh, towards our religious or Kandyan philosophy. So this CSR will help us to make our already doing that in the put it in a systems uh, or working. Yeah, next, uh, Sandhya. Okay, so this is what our uh, parameter number 20 is uh, asking us. I just copy pasted here. It asks like a uh, uh, policy on corporate social responsibility and also like uh, it uh, uh, requires that uh, practices are uh, clearly defined and action plans uh, uh, action plans are there, which they have given like uh, uh, five bulletin points, like uh, at least this should be covered and also there should be a mechanism to periodically review. That's what uh, given in our standard. And if you take CSR rules, even for some of the MSMEs, it is still applicable. Any company MSMEs who is uh, registered under uh, uh, Ministry of Corporate Affairs as a uh, private limited or public limited company who is having more than five crore profits, the rule is applicable for them also. It's not like a MSME CSR is not applicable. So there are three definitions is there for uh, whom it's applicable. One definition is like a turnover above 1000 crores. MSME can come above 1000 crores also because uh, exports is exempted in the MSME definition. So in terms of turnover also they can come. Net worth like uh, above uh, 500 crores and profit above 5 crores. This is the standard is applicable. So some of the things uh, uh, applicable for uh, uh, bigger companies, but whatever that CSR rule says, few things we can easily uh, implement uh, in SMB also that uh, uh, Josna will cover. So I will stop it here and I will uh, hand it over to Josna. Uh, if you have any question till now, you can also ask. So you can stop uh, sharing the presentation, uh, Sondarya. Thank you. Yeah, you are on mute, uh, Jotsna. You need to unmute. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Thank you, Sharath, for putting it in context. And uh, uh, we are in very exciting times when uh, India is taking a lead in defining quite a new, quite a lot of new concept. So the next uh, 20 to 30 minutes that I'm going to be talking about, I am going to maybe in some ways challenge your understanding of CSR and start giving you new perspectives on how these new rules that are coming up in India will need to be um, understood. Yeah. So the traditional definitions in some ways are changing, not not and me, but literally in foresight of the government. The government is really bringing up some new changes. And one point, if there's one thing that I want you to take away from this time that you're spending with us, is that a lot of concepts on CSR are going to become core to the way you run your business. Okay? There will be no new definitions on CSR. And so keep keep uh, your mind open to the idea that some of the concepts which you were thinking or which you thought you were an expert on is actually going to change in the coming five years. 
So what I'm going to talk about is CSR, the traditional definition, and CSR as the way it is changing. It's, it's sort of changing now, or keep an eye on the changes which are coming up in the CSR uh, definition. So I'd like to share my... Yeah, you I can have share. A presentation. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can you can share. Okay, just a second. Uh, okay, share. Uh, is that visible? Yeah, it's visible. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Sharad, is there some way where I can I can see the participants also? Uh, if you are in, uh, so, so yeah, yeah. Once you are in the yeah. uh, full mode, you can't see. So what you can do is like you can just share me the presentation. I will share it uh, for you. Okay, like that. No, yeah. it, now it might take it might take a lot of time for that. Okay. Yeah. Second. So, uh, is this is this visible to the participants? Yes, uh, it is. It's visible. Yeah. It's visible. Yeah. Should we yeah. go ahead? Should we go ahead? With make this? it larger. Okay. Make it larger. Make it larger. The size is smaller. We cannot really read it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fine. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go full screen. Uh, I am. I am yeah, it's visible. Yeah. It's okay, no? It's okay, fine. So the only thing is now I can't see you or see you people, see you all. So uh, Sharad, if there are some hands yeah, yeah, raised sure. or yeah, you can always. Uh, my colleague Rohit is also in the in the group. And uh, Rohit can also Hi, point out. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, okay. Rohit. Hi, Hi, uh, Yeah. Okay. So, just a brief introduction as to why we are here with you talking about it. What brings us to this table is the fact that we are the only accredited independent CSR Ashan body in India. Okay. Uh, we have been accredited by NABCB uh, and uh, like. Uh, we are, our competence lies in interpreting the national guidelines for responsible business conduct and ISO 26000, which is adopted by India. And ISO 26000 is the guidance standard for business re guidance responsibility for social responsibility. Guidance standard. Uh, how many of you have heard of ISO 26000? Can I just have a run of? Yeses and nos in the in the box in the chat box. Okay, Copa chat box is accessible to everyone. Yeah, it it seems like it's accessible to everyone. Yeah, can yeah. can we just just to get an idea of how many yeses and nos? How many of you are familiar with ISO twenty six thousand? No, no, no. Okay, okay, no, no. fine. Good. So maybe I'm going to talk a little bit on ISO 26000. ISO 26000 is a guidance standard for social responsibility. By the way, it is also a, uh, adopted by India. So India has an IS slash ISO 26000 uh, on business responsibilities. Now, the beauty of that particular standard is that it defines a lot of things that we use in the corporate social responsibility sphere. And another thing that you want to take away from here is ISO 26000 is the mother document which is made, uh, which is made, uh, which from which the national guidelines for responsible business conduct has been extracted. It's a, it's something that you will not uh, really see uh, a lot of literature on it. But just to give you a little history. ISO 26000, India was one of the biggest participate, participating countries. Almost 199 countries participated in making of ISO 26000. It is an ISO standard which has taken one of the longest time. It has taken eight years in formation. 
and it is a guidance standard. And uh, what happened? So India was a very, very active participant from 2001 to 2009. Okay, but what happened in 2009 was that because of a certain political issue, it, India did not sign up to that standard. We we'll talk about it another day. So unfortunately, what happened? While India had invested 10 years in developing ISO 26000, they did not sign it. This was in 2009, and as a knee-jerk reaction, India gobbled all its knowledge that it had developed in uh, what do you call ISO 26000 and brought out the national voluntary guidelines. So when you see ISO 26000 and you see national voluntary guidelines, you'll see that the words and all are starting to become. It's it's taken borrowed from that. But national voluntary guidelines was not the. Uh, Jyotsna, your presentation is not visible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just one second. Um, yeah, I'm still here on this uh, disruption in the thing. So what I essentially wanted to say was that ISO 26000, which India was a great one of the biggest contributors for the development of ISO 26000, did not get signed. Uh, Jyotsna, actually, you stop. You stopped the sharing. Sorry, you stopped the screen sharing. Earlier it was there, but it was not on this uh, PowerPoint uh, slide that time. Okay. Is it happening now? Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's clear. Okay. So, uh, Blue Sky basically is we our competency is in ISO 26000 and national guidelines for responsible business conduct. Yeah. And I would like to point out that national guidelines for responsible business conduct is very much in alignment for ISO 26000 with ISO 26000. Incidentally, India also adopted ISO 26000 in 2018. It became a national standard for social responsibility. But like uh, Sharath mentioned, there has been there are a lot of action, actions, activities, and development happening with the Indian version of ISO 26000, which you will hear very shortly about. The reason why I spent some time introducing these new concepts is because. In the future, whatever you're going to read about CSR or your definition and implementation of CSR is going to be very much influenced by this connection. Okay, so I so remember it's CSR is somehow related to ISO 26000 and uh, NGRBC National Guidelines for Responsible Business Conduct. Okay, so I was talking about the disruption in the CSR space in India. Uh, when it was introduced into, you know, there is a law on uh, the CSR where 2% of the profits with, uh, with some filters has to be, uh, you know, uh, given in, uh, put in social development activities. Yeah, not applicable for MSME, but like Sharad said, there are different categories under which it might, it will start getting applicable in, in the coming future. Uh, uh, that really changed a lot of things, uh, and this is as of 2020. Uh, you can look at the numbers we are talking about, which is which is what is you know what is coming under the CSR funds. I mean, 33,200 crores went into the PM cares. And the last, the recent numbers were something to the tune of 7,000 crores since the time it had started. Okay, and uh, look at the third point. <clears throat> So B B R S R. Uh, how many people have heard of B R S R? Here, can I have a show of hands? Sharad, please tell me what it looks like. A lot of people have heard about it, or it's a new idea for most of the participants. Sharad, you are in mute. Yeah, so two people uh, raise the hands like uh, Manish and uh, Harsha. 
Now they are familiar with BRSR, but most yeah. of the people are not. Yeah. Okay. So again, this is again a new, uh, very important cornerstone concept that um, this particular set of people will have to start getting familiar with. So business responsibility and sustainability reporting is uh, introduced by SEBI and it will be the one which will drive the business. Now, what is business responsibility and sustainability reporting? I'm not going to go into too much details about it, but it basically, it requires you to disclose your environmental, social and governance issues, okay? So, so see how it is sort of what was CSR as something good that you do out of philanthropy or because of your dharma or karma or something like that has now become an important issue of disclosure because VRSR is a mandatory disclosure which is coming. It is mandatory for the top thousand of people in the thousand companies in India are registered with SEBI. But in, uh, in a very short time, uh, maybe in the next three to five years, almost any organization registered with the Ministry of Corporate Affairs will need to bring out their BRSR. So it's no longer a CSR, good thing to do, peripheral to the organization. It is slowly becoming core to the reason why an organization exists and the footprint of the organization on environmental, social and governance issues. There is another very new concept which is coming in, which is called the social stock exchange. I'm sorry, I'm I'm overloading you with new things, but uh, new concepts. But you know, you cannot discuss CSR in India in 2023 without knowing of these two major, uh, of the, without understanding the concept of these two major changes which are coming, which is the BRSR and the social stock exchange. Um, social stock exchange takes the concept of CSR to another level because it basically says that you have whatever be your business, whatever be the business that you are in, if you want to raise money for your business from the market, it's no longer just the capital market, but it's the social stock market. You will have to talk about the social impact your organization is making. And so we are moving towards an era where the social impact is going to be an auditable uh, concept. It it'll, it'll become the unit for you. It will be the unit uh, of trade for you based on the amount of social impact that your organization is moving and making. So I hope uh, I have been able to bring out the fact that it's no longer CSR. It's no longer about writing a check and saying, oh, okay, like I've given one lakh for COVID relief or for I have painted the school. Uh, it's no longer limited to that. You might still continue to do that, but you will have to talk about what is the impact that your CSR is making. Yeah, this is the, this, this, this is a huge change which is coming in the next maybe two to three years. And now when you link it up with your Z certification, you start seeing how, how powerful your Z certification becomes because not only does it make you a gold certified in a Z scheme, but what you're doing has starting to is, will have huge implications for the existence of your business, for the resilience of your business, for it to be recognized as an important value chain partner for the larger business. Uh, I'm not going to go to, this is what I was trying to tell you when I was saying that 2009, so 2012, you see, when uh, three years after India did not sign up with the ISO 26,000, um, <clears throat> we had the national voluntary guidelines and by two, 2019, over a period of seven years, that national voluntary guidelines has come in as national guidelines for responsible business conduct. Uh, you must you must read that for you to be uh, to understand the relevance of what is happening in India currently. I have uh, a small video for you which shows uh,
so for the videos like uh, just now when uh, sharing you need to share with the audio you can uh, stop sharing minute. yeah again you can uh, share with the uh, audio how do i do that yeah you just click stop sharing uh -huh. then again click uh, share while sharing you will see one button called include computer sound okay just a second share again i need to share yeah in the first line you will see include computer sound you click that button okay okay just one second share share system audio yes share. okay and i am here okay. is that better now welcome to hybris news my name yes. is suresh okay rajesh verma secretary ministry of corporate affairs government of india welcome to hybris news my name is suresh kochar Rajesh Verma, Secretary, Ministry of Corporate Affairs, Government of India, released a report of the Committee on Business Responsibility Reporting, or BRR. The BRR was released in the presence of Dr. Samir Sharma, Director General, IICA, Sri Amarjit Singh, Executive Director, SEBI, Sri Atul Gupta, President, ICAI, Sri Ashish Garg, President, ICSI, and Sri R. Mukundan, CEO, Tata Chemicals, besides representatives from CII. Fiki, Asocam, and individuals from business, academia, and civil society organizations, highlighting the data and trends on environmental and social governance investing globally. Sri Amarjit Singh, Executive Director SEBI, said that due to the increasing trends of ESG investing, the demand for non-financial reporting is also growing. In this respect, the BRSR framework will set the stage for sustainable investing. The Ministry of Corporate Affairs has been taking various initiatives for ensuring responsible business conduct by the companies. As a first stage toward mainstreaming the concept of business responsibility, the voluntary guidelines on corporate social responsibility were issued in 2009. These guidelines were subsequently revised as national voluntary guidelines on social, environmental, and economic responsibilities of business 2011 after extensive consultations with business academia, civil society organizations, and the government. The Securities and Exchange Board of India, SEBI, through its listing regulations in 2012, mandated the top 100 listed entities by market capitalization to file business responsibility reports from an environmental, social, and governance perspective. These BRRs enable business to demonstrate the adoption of NVG principles and the attendant core elements with the intent of engaging businesses more meaningfully with their stakeholders going beyond regulatory financial compliance. This was extended to the top 500 companies by financial year 2015-16 and further extended to top 1,000 companies in December 2019. Taking into account the national and international developments in the arena of business and human rights since 2011, the NVGs have been updated and released as NG RBC or the National Guidelines on Responsible Business Conduct in March 2019 to reveal alignments within the UNGPs, UN Sustainable Development Goals, Paris Agreement on Climate Change, among others. In furtherance to the updation and formulation of the NG RBS, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs has constituted a committee on business responsibility reporting to develop new BRR formats for listed and unlisted companies. The committee comprised of representatives from MCA, SEBI, three professional institutes, and two eminent professionals who had worked on developing the NGRBCS. After extensive consultations with various stakeholders, including businesses and their associations, professional institutes, academia, civil society organizations, central ministries and departments, the committee submitted its report to the central government. In its report, the committee recommended a new reporting format called the Business Responsibility Sustainability Report, or BRSR, for better to reflect the intent and scope of reporting on non-financial parameters. The committee recommended two formats for disclosure, one a comprehensive format and the second a light version. 
The committee further recommended that the implementation of the reporting requirement should be done in a gradual and phased manner. The committee also recommended that the BRSR be integrated with the NCA 21 portal. As long-term measure, the committee envisions that the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. So uh, what I would really like to ask um, the members who are present here, we are almost, uh, we are almost uh, 45 people here, is uh, what are the new words that you heard here? Can you type, what was the word that stuck with you? Something that you know, something you don't know. What are the new words that you came across? Um, this? Do you want to type it on the chat box, please? Mahesh says that there was the sound was breaking in between. Uh, I understand. Um, any any new words? Any new concepts that you heard of? Why do you think I made you hear this? <laughs> Is something getting typed here? BRSR. Nageshwar Ramji says BRSR. Then. Business social responsibility, BRSR. Yeah, I'm, I'm searching for that one big word that you need to take away from here. What is BRSR? What is? What do you think BRSR is? ESG, yes. ESG is very, very important takeaway from what we are talking about. ESG is a new concept. Yeah. Related to CSR, yes. Okay, good. We are in the periphery of all this thing, but we have been hearing a lot about sustainable business. Yes, Sushilji, we have heard about that. All are what you are calling non-financial reporting. Yeah. Sibachi, yeah. So the word, so what exactly is BRSR? BRSR is something that everybody is hearing, ESG, ESG um, is, uh, is again a new word. What is BRSR and ESG? It's basically a non-financial report. So what I am trying, the point I'm trying to make here is we are moving away from measuring our business only on financial terms and non-financial reporting is becoming an extremely important disclosure for your business to exist. And what is non-financial reporting? Non-financial reporting is the impact of your business on environment, social, and governance. So the concept of CSR, corporate social responsibility, or what in other words was called the social responsibility of a corporate, has grown further, is growing more in importance to start talking about the impact of your business on social, environment, and governance issues. So effectively, the point I'm trying to make here is that your CSR is emerging or growing or maturing, uh, maturing what we call the business responsibility. And look at the type of developments that's happening in the business responsibility field. Like your BRSR is all about disclosures in the business responsibility field. So your CSR, what you, we had initially agreed, uh, you know, what we had initially gathered to speak about as a part of a Z certification is now very important aspect that you need to get, try to get as a part of your Z certification. We should encourage our people to go for gold certification because that it's just not the 20th parameter, but it also become, becomes an important part of uh, the reporting, you know, the non-financial reporting. Uh, getting back to the slides, uh, in just a second. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go ahead with this. Uh, okay, so I have a question of you. I have a question of you. Uh, what is, 
How would you define CSR? So we have got all we have all got together here today to discuss the point number 20th, the 20th parameter for a Z certification, which is CSR. And I I understand that a lot of you are experts in the Z certification here. So what according to you is a definition for CSR? If you want to unmute yourself and the RSJ team could manage or you want to type it out. Or whatever is okay for you, but tell me what's your definition of a CSR? Uh, may I request that uh, you mute yourself if you're not referring to the discussion here? Mr. Balaji, you are saying something? Okay, I would suggest that we keep the participants muted and uh, can you type it down or would somebody want to raise their hand and be, uh, discuss their view of what the CSR definition is? See, I would like anybody to speak. Here? Yeah, please. Uh, organizers see, can, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so he's any, sharing directly, any? yeah. Yeah, any any business uh, entity mm. in our Indian society, uh, mm -hmm. see they are, they are uh, running the business with the objective of earning some money, you know, for for mm -hmm. the company. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, I feel that the organization or the company should have a responsibility uh, mm -hmm. towards uh, towards uh, the development of the neighboring uh, areas or say mm. some uh, the people who are in the society who are downtrodden mm. in the society uh, mm. they should uh, get some benefit out of their profit uh, uh, okay. The organizations. okay fine fine not wrong not wrong uh, but uh, but not it's more a, it's not a definition it's more of an explanation so my question to you, uh, Ratanji, is: Do do we have a def do we have a legal definition of CSR in India? Mm, Are there I'm any legal? Yeah. Anybody wants to guess? Yeah, Harsha raised a hand. Yeah, Harsha raised a hand. Uh, Harsha, like you can uh, unmute and uh, you can uh, share. Yeah, yeah. please. So MCA, MCA has uh, specified certain criteria limits, like the companies uh, with uh, this much amount of uh, net worth, if they their profit exceeds certain uh, limit specified by MCA, they need to contribute mm. a certain percentage of amount towards corporate social responsibility. It's a part of creating mm. social impact by these organizations. I agree. My question is, sorry, Harsha, my question is, does India have a definition of CSR? Okay, I want to contribute two percent of my profits to CSR, but has India defined CSR? Not really, actually. So the answer no, is I don't yeah, know. The answer yeah. is that India doesn't really have a definition for CSR. I see Sushil Sharma ji saying the impact of change an organization is bringing to the environment and society. Yes, you are very near the definition of a social res social responsibility, a corporate social responsibility. But India basically does not have it. I want to share with you what India calls corporate social. This is the near. Can you see it? Can you see my screen, please? Uh, yeah, it's coming now. Yeah, now it's okay. So the nearest legal reference that we have. Uh, for a definition of corporate social responsibility is this. This is not really a definition, but it just says what activities are considered as CSR. So CSR means and includes, but is not limited to projects or programs related to the activities specified in Schedule 7 of the Indian Companies Act or projects and programs. See, again, it talks about projects and programs related relating to activities undertaken by the board of directors of a company of the board blah 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 okay subject to condition that such policy will cover subjects enumerated in schedule 7 of the act and what is the schedule 7 of the act 
Schedule 7 of the Act are these activities which have been identified in the Companies Act. So if there is any activity which you can show or demonstrate is that it is being done in this, these are the type of activities that you can, you have to do, you are doing, then you might be able to say that you have done some corporate social uh, responsibility activities. Okay. But uh, yeah, is that okay? Yeah. No. So, 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 just now, like uh, one question normally our uh, uh, assessors or uh, uh. implementers get is there are uh. some of the activities which are all the activities are not allowed under the uh, yeah. CSR. So, yeah. for example, like uh, uh, somebody is like uh, uh, build a temple in their factory mm. or somebody is contributing to uh, temple mm. donations. Mm. No, so so basically, uh, you know, unless and until you can interpret your activity uh, in terms of any of these activities, you know, you can you can uh, you can only talk about that. Like, so if you're if you're if you're building a temple inside your factory, under what logic is it corporate social responsibility? I mean, just just to answer a question with a question. Is it eradicating extreme poverty? Is it promoting education? Is it promoting gender equality and empowering women? Is it reducing child mortality? Almost nothing. Yeah. OK, so so the answer is I, like I, any I activities, huh. any activities covered under Schedule 7 that will be considered under the CSR. If yeah. any activities which is not covered under a CSR rule schedule seven, which is hmm. which which may be like questionable. Yeah, it might be questionable. Uh, we will ask Sushil ji to share uh, his example of CSR. But before I pass on the mic to him, I wanted to let you know if this is more of a trivia. One of the biggest contributors, uh, one of the education, of course, has taken most of the CSR funds. But apart from education, Goshalas, remember Goshalas have been one of the biggest consumer of CSR funds. Okay, so is it is it religious? Is it political? Uh, I I mean, you, we can debate it till the cows come home. But the thing is that under animal welfare, a lot of organizations have contributed to Goshalas. So there is a, a religious element, but. The CSR is not being done for a religious element, but for a uh, animal welfare. Uh, over to you, Sushil ji. You wanted to you wanted to give an example of your uh, thing. Yes. So uh, the link which I shared, this is uh, mm -hmm. one of the CSR activity from my current organization. So mm -hmm. this is Operation Smile, and uh, my organization is contributing toward thousands of operation of kids with the cleft lip. Mm. And uh, like uh, they ask for the mm. donations, they ask for the toys for kids. Mm. And uh, this is something like which is currently ongoing. So it came to mm. my mind and thought of sharing. Yeah, yeah, very those. nice. Yeah, definitely. OK, so we'll take this as an example to discuss how this would be if your organization is doing something like this. How does it become an important contributor for your organization to get a Z certificate? Uh, a Z gold certificate. Yeah, we'll come. We'll come to that on that. Yeah, we'll take. Uh, yeah. We'll work with Sushil ji to discuss that uh, further. Okay, just now there is one more question. Yeah, just now there is one more question from Mr. Uh, Vishwanatha. Yeah, he is asking hmm. like a CSR is it uh, in line with the SA eight thousand? Ah, uh, no. So see. No, there is a bit of a difference. You can say that they are both in, like if I have to give an example, um, they are uh, in the same area of social impact, but SA 8000 by itself is not CSR. SA 8000 is basically an audit of the management systems. So yes, it's an important contributor to your CSR because it because SA 8000 looks into all your policies. What's your policy for CSR? What's your policy for human rights? How do you implement it? What are your caps? So yes, it's a it's a good framework to understand CSR, but it's it's 
it's a bit more specific. Um, you can so if you have done a SA eight thousand, you can't claim yourself to be CSR uh, compliant. You would say I am mature on uh, on my understanding of CSR because I have got a SA eight thousand, but that by itself is not CSR. So Shivashish uh, Basu says expenditure yeah, for pediatric cancer. No, is that something that you contribute to? Yes, if anybody contributes, any of the organization, MSME contributes, any contributes one time or at least mm -hmm. uh, once in a year to the pediatric cancer or the vision, sure. because I am associated sure. with Lions Club. So Lions yeah, Vision sure. is basically vision and a site for kids, basically vision, hunger and pediatric cancer. If any mm -hmm. of the organization donates money for this issue, this will be mm -hmm. a, a considered as a CSR activity. Absolutely. But see, this is the point I'm trying to make here is just writing out a check for pediatric cancer once for, let's say, five lakhs is not the best of CSR. So it, what, no. if it has to be it's a permanent project, yeah? if, if anybody, if an MSME takes a permanent project, mm -hmm. yeah. they, they, yeah. might, they might install their toy house, they might yeah, install yeah, yeah. their a permanent project sort of thing any pediatric yeah, hospital yeah. Then it would so be, that then can it be... would be csr so okay. one of the most important things I'm, I'm i'm going to jump the thing and i'm going to i'm going to jump my slides and go directly to the z this is what we were talking about can you see this yes yeah yes so what are the components of the CSR that we are talking? We talked about operational spy, operation smile, we talked about pediatrics, we talked about Goshala. When does it become a CSR? Is when your MSME has a policy on corporate social responsibility in place. Okay. It's just so it becomes a part of your governance issue that I have a policy which says that as a, a business organization. Uh, every year we are committed for the development of the sick and uh, you know or whatever children in uh, cancer hospitals or we are contributing for cancer care and in the process every year we are going to give three lakhs to xyz organization uh, for cancer research then it becomes a corporate social responsibility so so it is extremely important that you are doing that because it is a part of your governance. You have a policy on corporate social responsibility and not only be, just like a checkbook. You know, you have some money, so you give it for a cause. Yeah. Look at the Josnaji, second thing. Uh, Josnaji, uh. I want to share one more example uh, uh -huh. uh, from my, you know, the previous organizations which you worked for, mm -hmm. Maruti Suzuki. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. see, uh, uh, the organization Maruti Suzuki felt that there is a, a, mm -hmm. a huge number of accidents in the Indian roads. So mm -hmm. there is mm -hmm. a need for you know imparting mm -hmm. the safe driving skill to the truck drivers or the yeah. commercial mm -hmm. bus drivers. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. they uh, started the you know uh, uh, mm -hmm. imparting skills for the driving safe mm -hmm. driving habits mm -hmm. for the truck mm -hmm. drivers and the bus drivers. Mm -hmm. So this. Uh, I think you know it's a part of uh, CSR activities mm. on the big corporates like uh, Maruti yeah. Suzuki. Yeah, Ratan, you Ratanji, you brought out something very interesting that I want to talk about, and we can take this as an example and discuss it further. Now, one minute, uh, one the thing like now uh, I'm taking the Maruti Suzuki example. And uh, I'm going to bring in a difference between what was a traditional CSR, good enough to do, but where the maturity of CSR is becoming a BRSR. So if Maruti Suzuki gave 100 rupees to an NGO for safe driving, yeah, or let's say empowerment of women, it gave 100 rupees to an NGO train for training women drivers. Right. Yeah? It could be called a simple CSR. More jada expectation nahi hai. NGO ko, NGO ko de diya, 50 women drivers ko train kar diya. Okay, in that. You're happy. You're meeting all, you're ticking all the boxes in terms of compliance. 
But now when your BRSR is coming, you are looking, you are still training the people for on training. Uh, you're still training the people on safe driving. But now your intent is more defined as making driving a safe place, uh, making a driving a safe skill. That's right. Do you see how the maturity has gone up? Now, instead, so what happens is because you are an automobile company, where, which is where one of the risks of your company is bad driving, death, social, where on the social risk is poor driving or drunken driving and, you know, accidents and all that stuff. So you are addressing the larger risk of your business, which is driving. Then it becomes your business responsibility. It is not arbitrary that we have empowered 50 ladies ko empower kar diya by safe driving skills. Or, you know, we have empowered 50 truck drivers to give them training. De diya. Yeah? That is... So I would say that if you're looking at training 550 truck drivers two hours will just be CSR. But if you say I am I am training 50 truck drivers for two hours to ensure on safe driving skills, it becomes a business responsibility. It's core because driving becomes a core of your organization because you're an automobile organization. Did you did did this difference between a pure philanthropic CSR and BS BRSR? I mean business responsibility. Did you get the difference? BR Anybody business wants? responsibility because you see no. it is a social impact by yeah. uh, creating a accidental free roads in our country. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, this is more of a social impact or a, a, a safe... See, the social... Uh, uh, sorry to jump in, Ratan, but I, you said the right words and I just want to complete the statement for you. You are making a social impact by which strengthens your business. Yeah? Uh, no, it, it doesn't uh, have any linkage with the businesses because you see. No, no. See, we, you're in the we business want, of uh, automobiles. You're in the business of automobiles where safe fact, driving no. skills adds to your business. Is an no, outcome no, of your business. No, 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 no. It's not. Rather, it is other way around. If it, okay. if, if 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 they make accidents, you know. So the organizations can uh, sell more spare parts for the accidental <laughs> repair. So no, no, we are, we will not apply that logic. We will apply the logic that so, good driving so, skills is so is an is, outcome of a good of a responsible company. I'm selling yes, you vehicles, you but say, I'm also yeah, you selling can say you it's a, a good... responsible company's uh, yeah, attitude or yeah, yeah, that's the, what the I mean. image of the company. You know, so yeah. they want uh, people to be safe. Uh, exactly. Know, that's market. what I meant. Yeah. So when you're not only selling automobiles, but you're also selling them safe driving skills, you come across as a responsible business. Yes. That is that's what I meant. Yeah. That's uh, what Josna, I meant. Uh, Josna, like uh, yeah, Anil Bhatiaji is asking some question in the uh, text box. He's yeah, asking yeah. like, and uh, I'm, give it. Yeah. I'm, I'm also aware of the time. And so, yes, I'll quickly uh, answer Anil. Uh, Anil Bhatiaji, what do you think? What do you think the answer to your question is? What would you like the answer to the question? Anil? Hello? Yeah. Uh... But yeah, like uh, if you are saying something, you are on mute. So he's saying like it's not a CSR. Yeah, it's not CSR at all. It's basic compliance. It's the Factories Act. Yeah, it's not a BSR. It says giving wages on time is uh, is 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 a basic human right. If I have done eight hours of work, you need to you need to. It's not social responsibility. It's not even business responsibility. It's a basic human right. 
and giving overtime as double of wages, why would it be a CSR activity? It's the basic thing. If I have worked for more than eight hours, the law says that I should be getting it at double the wages. So where is where is the responsibility coming? It's a basic human right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Yuraj, uh, you want to ask some questions? Okay. I, yeah. I, I, I just want to, okay, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, just now I have one question. See, uh, most hmm. of the time we are visiting this these, uh, most of the times we are visiting the uh, factories and uh, these hmm. are the small proprietorships and they are hmm. carried out small donation, everything, but uh, hmm. while putting their name, normally hmm. they prefer to put the name of the either directors or proprietors. Mm -hmm. And when we interact with them, they show okay, this XYZ, we are doing all the activities, but this is not on the name of the organization. Mm -hmm. So, are we going to consider such activity under the CSR or uh, uh, yeah. it is not a CSR? So, see, I'll, I'll put this back again. I'll put this back again. Yeah. So, when, Yuvraj, when, when we are, I'm sorry, when did, yeah. When I, as a director of my company, give one lakh rupees for a particular project, it is philanthropy. It is my philanthropy. It's my charity. It's typically what you call, um, in Indian philosophy, what you call dana. Yeah? So, when they put their name as proprietor, so-and-so, it is technically not CSR. The style is same. The style is it is technically not CSR because the CSR has to be done by the organization. Okay, so if he writes proprietor, Jyotsna Vilyapa, proprietor of Blue Sky Sustainable Business, it might still be considered as CSR. But if uh, if I only write my name, Jyotsna Vilyapa, proprietor, it, it, no, not really. Because it's the organization which is making the contribution and not the individual. Okay, another reason why I would not really look at it as a best practice is, did he decide to give this particular donation because that NGO is being run by his auntie? Or what was the reason why he decided to give it? What prompted him to give, an, give a donation for this particular cause? So that is where, which is one of the darkest and the grayest areas in India uh, on CSR is because it, usually goes into family foundations and then the family foundation buys Mercedes Benz for the, uh, you know, people to <laughs> go around in it. It becomes a shell organization. So it is extremely important that good CSR be recognized as something that is emanating out of the policy on corporate social organization, sustainability, I'm sorry, corporate social responsibility is in place. And irrespective, this is why Sharat and I, we have been talking about this because it's something that I'm passionate about. It is not It is not so much about the money that you can contribute, but it is the intent that you contribute with. And it is the frequency with which you can support it. How sustainable is your contribution to make a difference in this world? So, you know, as organizations, the first step, and I'm, I'm literally coming to the end of my uh, talk in the sense that if you're looking for a gold certification, if you're advising your clients to get a gold certification on Z, please talk, integrate it as a policy into the organization, irrespective of whether I am a 500 crore or a 5,000 crore. It, this policy is something that can come even to the smallest of organizations, uh, you know, which is generating a certain amount of re revenue. So one of the first things is policy on corporate social. What are the causes you support? To what extent will you support? What is it? How do you recognize the partner, implementing partners? What do you want on them? What are the type of reports that you want on the 1 lakh or 10 lakh or 50 lakhs that you have spent on CSR? Okay. So see, this is this part. Corporate social responsibilities with clear action plans. Okay. What are the type of organizations that you are doing? So I am, I want to build, a, I want to, I'm going to give 10 lakhs for building a school. And then you see that you give it to a contractor who hires child labor. Is that CSR? Not really. Okay. 
So things like that. So, you know, the action plans have to be very clearly defined about why you're doing a certain uh, practice. And uh, these are the other areas where you can look into labor practices, environment, fair operating practices. Who are your stakeholders? Do they really want what you want, what you want to give? Okay, like for example, there was this thing that um, <clears throat> one particular organization we worked with built a lot of uh, hand pumps. Okay, they contributed huge amount of uh, hand pumps uh, in a particular village where, when the whereas the gram panchayat was basically saying, please put in the pipelines for us. But this particular organization, for whatever reason, decided to bore do bore wells. And incidentally, the whole thing was a flop because the bore well, the water was not uh, was very high on fluoride content, which made the entire effort a waste and also left the community with no water. So, you know, like when you're talking about I'm going to work in the space of water, are you involving your community? Have you taken a stakeholder feedback? These are the things which make CSR. And most important is the mechanism to periodically review the corporate social responsibility practices by senior management is in place. So it's just not about giving 10 lakhs and writing Dutsa Veliapa Propriteer who donated this instrument or this uh, machine, but it is also seeing that whether it is making a difference. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, uh, so what I, uh, what we have discussed for all this, the definition of what constitutes a CSR, we have discussed how CSR is becoming a larger concept of a business responsibility. Yeah, this is what you have to keep an eye on, and. Uh, we've talked about what constitutes the different aspects of a CSR, which you can help your clients to get a gold certification in Z. And uh, I mean, I would encourage a lot of gold certifications in Z, uh, basically because you people are the value chain partners of large corporates. And it not only increases your credibility, it will attract a lot of business to you because corporates are desperately searching for MSME partners who are good in the, who are responsible in the business. And so a gold certification will be a huge value to the MSME. Over to you, Shara. Is there yeah, anything else that you would like me to cover? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Josna. So there are a couple of questions like uh, before uh, going for a question and answer. Few things. Mm -hmm. So what are that uh, shared today, like uh, BRSR or uh, CSR requirements? So when we are going for a Z assessments, we will look into based on this Z standard. Okay, we are yeah. not going to assess the MSME based on uh, uh, CSR rules or BRSR uh, uh, requirements. We are only going to see it in the uh, perspective of a Z standard or a Z, Z requirements. Yeah, absolutely, so, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So that that I want to keep the context clear. So. Uh, like uh, uh, when we are going to uh, uh, MSMEs, particularly micro or small, uh, let's not use some uh, technical words like uh, 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 when we are using that, we need to be careful and uh, we need to be like uh, sensitive, like uh, what context we are uh, uh, using. Yeah. So that like yeah. it should not be misquoted to uh, any uh, MSME officials or uh, 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 scheme owners or a uh, quality council of India. So I want Absolutely. like everyone to be, uh, be sensitive, like... Uh, uh, some of the things like uh, what are the Jyotsna is sharing here, just to give an idea what is required. So that's the first part uh, which I want to share. And uh, second, uh, mm. so when like there are some of the checklists like uh, when uh, they are having like for example the uh, corporate policy. So corporate policy should address minimum few things like uh, Jyotsna shared. One is who is the target beneficiary or target uh, uh, community they are addressing. Second, mm -hmm. um, what is the activities they are going to take out of that uh, schedule seven? Or uh, there are uh, 16 activities are there. So uh, Soundarya shared like a WhatsApp group. So we will share this presentation to all of you. You can have a look onto that. Also, I can share that uh, ISO 26001 uh, 
uh, wide consultations right now is happening for the uh, amendment and the previous standard like uh, what are that they have uh, current standard uh, uh, the first standard uh, guidelines documents that also i will share it in the group so you can have a look it will give the broader uh, guidelines uh, like uh, how uh, uh, msme can uh, uh, implement it the first one is like a uh, policy second one is the committee it's not mandatory committee is like only for the companies who is going to spend like more than 50 lakh rupees but still uh, uh, bigger companies they can go for that it's a only recommendation it's not a, a compulsion and uh, third one is at least one management review in a year as per the csr rules like at least three but uh, uh, many of the smb csr rules is not applicable so uh, they they can have like at least one management review and one in that impact review needs to be done like what are that money they uh, um, uh, they have budgeted or they have targeted for that particular area what are that benefit they have aimed at whether it's happening or not happening that needs to be reviewed there are some inputs there are some outputs that also like uh, in the presentations while i am sharing it will be there so that covers the overall uh, uh, areas like i know some of you want to ask uh, questions mr sanjeev uh, you can unmute yourself and you can ask okay so yeah, my Mr. question josna is in from the assessor mm -hmm. side Yeah, yeah, the most mandatory thing is that you should have a CSR policy. Hmm. How do I, as a assessor, check the adequacy of the CSR policy, whether it is adequate? Like, uh, this yeah. can be checked. Yeah. Same way, how do I check the CSR policy? I understand there are rules. What you said. Yeah. Some guidelines, but so, exact specific. So very honestly, there is no set rule on an adequacy of a. Uh, CSR policy. Of course, it should be in a policy format. It should have an idea of what is the intent of this policy. It should have an idea. It should have some this thing as to who is responsible for the policy and how does it get implemented. But yeah. in terms of, there is no standard definition on the adequacy part of it. Like for example, if you are an organization. which is let's say four people working and you have been in existence for the last 3 years you might have different priorities as compared to an organization which has been in existence for 15 years you know to so the maturity levels the need the level of uh, maturity of a particular organization will influence it and that's good enough it fit is relevant and significant to your organization that is good enough you can't compare the csr policies across organizations because it will be different because their needs will be different okay got that mm. uh, as long as you are convinced that there is genuine you know there it has been tried genuinely i think that should be adequate uh, hello uh, can i can yeah. i ask so a question ma'am yeah, yeah just yeah, i will yeah. add it i will add to mr pisse so some of the things like uh, even some uh, promoters or the uh, people like they are believing in that uh, area they can select that and also they can uh, select the nearby ideas and also they can connect it with uh, sdg goals like any sdg goals like which uh, yeah. they want to highlight and mm -hmm. uh, as i shared earlier so minimum the policy should target like who is the target beneficiary and okay. uh, what is the activities they are selecting Yeah. and third is how much money they are uh, planning for that particular for area that particular and uh, recommended is put it in their website and it's not again mandatory for smb if they can uh, able okay. to put it in their website like this is the committed areas uh, committed uh, 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 we are going to work that's enough okay thank you hello hello yeah please carry on mr ganpati hello can i yeah, yeah, audible please. vishwanath yeah 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 yeah, yeah mr vishwanath yeah please Yeah. So, as an assessor, if I am going to audit and assess an organization uh, which has hardly uh, less than a lakh turnover per month and less than uh, two three workers and one person who is doing a proprietor, how do you address the SR policies here? Yeah. This I have uh, experience for so many member of organizations we have done now. Uh, hardly uh, less than a lakh. They have applied for gold. Uh, no, we will not discuss how and all. Uh, less than a uh, lakh per month uh, turnover. Uh, less than three workers. They have one person in charge. Uh, hardly uh, area of 200 square meter. Uh, the entire area processing area. 
how do I go ahead assessing a uh, theater? Uh, Sharath, you are answering that now because I mean you're more familiar with the Z process. Uh, sir, like a uh, 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 one, like a uh, uh, this kind of uh, 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 it's 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 a very rare case. It's like a, uh, uh, I I truly understand. Like it happens like uh, uh, because of the aspirations. Like uh, some MSMEs directly apply for a uh, gold without uh, understanding the context. So here uh, we need to be like uh, very very careful and very very sensitive. And uh, somebody is having an aspiration to apply for a uh, gold. We need to respect them and uh, we need to uh, appreciate them and uh, uh, and also like uh, when somebody is having a, that kind of a, a lesser uh, lesser of people, uh, even if somebody is uh, taking their time out in a year, like a few hours uh, in a uh, in a quarter, and uh, they are doing uh, any kind of uh, uh, support in this uh, selected uh, sixteen activities. Even if they spend like a, 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 a some a couple of a hundred rupees or thousand rupees in this area for a, any area, we uh, it's better to uh, appreciate and acknowledge them and uh, accept uh, in that context. Okay, one more situation, sir. I had already said uh, the management says that we are not uh, we don't want to uh, disclose any NCS activities. We just do it on our own. We don't want to disclose. Yeah, so we need to we need to evaluate actually what are the no, no, let me let me let me complete, sir. He says yeah. we are not covered under that uh, the two percent whatever it is there. So as such, we do it, but we don't want to disclose. Sir, so let me repeat: if anybody is supplying for a, applying for a gold, all the companies, even one man company, if they are doing like even ten thousand rupees turnover, they are covered under gold. It's no anybody, any company, MSMEs who is applying for Z Gold, it's covered under the CSR, and there is no exception saying that like we are not covered. It's a voluntary, it's not like a mandatory or regulatory requirements, it's the standard requirements. So no MSME can claim that it's not applicable for us. That's the first. Second, even if it is like a smaller company, they need to have a some kind of policy. Policy is like a it's it's a return policy, they need to have a return policy. This is like a bare minimum. Like uh, we can't, uh, company can't claim that like uh, I don't have a policy because I'm having like only uh, three people company or I'm having like uh, one lakh rupees per month. So they may need to take a well, strategic decision whether they want to apply for a gold this year or next year or afterwards. Uh, fine, sir. Then you have to uh, educate the organization to that extent. Yeah. Make them aware. Yeah. I would like to add on to this is this is not a good boy, bad boy thing, you know, in the sense like I don't want to be very discreet about it or I want to show off how much I have contributed. It's beyond individual uh, levels of uh, communication. It is certifying your organization's governance. So not talking about it is a choice that you have. You might not want to talk about it, but uh, but you might want to, you, you know, what Sharad said about the policy and all that is a must. You can't, you can't say, I don't want to talk about it, but I don't also have a policy, but I give 15 lakhs or I give 30% of my profits to CSR. It's still not CSR. It's not CSR until and unless your organization has a policy defining what you do as an activity which can be considered as csr okay uh, one more question ma'am uh, an organization mm -hmm. has employed disabled uh, able people uh, in their organization can we take it okay. as a csr activity differentially if, able if, people in the organization if it is a part of the policy if, if it yeah. is a part of the csr policy which says that they would generate employment or as a part of the human rights uh, commitment they are generating, they have reserved 1% of their jobs for disabled people, then it is a CSR. But if they are not covered in the policy? It's regular. It's perfectly okay. 
If they've not covered it in a policy, they're, you know, maybe the disabled person goes away and next time for that particular job, they might hire an able person, which is perfectly okay. Because there is nothing within the organization which says that they have to hire a disabled. It doesn't show a com long-term commitment. Uh, and environmental uh, maintaining around them, like I say, cleaning of beaches, cleaning of hill stations, cleaning of that, you know, take into yeah. Uh, so no, as long as it's a part of their intent, this is something that they do uh, do because they believe it, not because it's a one-off activity. Yeah. So I mean to say that everything should go into the policy first. So I wouldn't like to define it in. You know, like make it so bracketed, saying that if it is written only that I'm doing, but I'm saying that an organization, when there are 5,000 things which need attention, how do you decide that you will focus on one or two items? Yeah? Yeah. Sandhya, can you go to that uh, 16 sectors, like where we have put the slide? So just to give the perspective to... Uh, uh, so Nidhi uh, Ayog have uh, highlighted uh, 16 sectors where India is lacks our uh, performance. So this is the 16 areas like activities. And uh, Schedule 7 also gives the activities uh, Josna shares. If somebody is like identifying and working on this particular area and that kind of activities can be considered as a uh, social activities or uh, CSR activities. And uh, one of the uh, checkpoint is if that activity is done only for getting benefit for the organization, then that may be in the gray area or a question mark. If it is done for serving the underserved or serving the uh, 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 less privileged uh, target segments, that's, a, that's also a rule which you can check. What is the intent? Is it going to only... Uh, uh, only uh, benefit the organization, then it might not come under the CSR. But this is all for bigger organization where they are meeting these uh, CSR rules. But when we are going for a Z area, SMB or my MSME, we have a lot of uh, leniency because it's not uh, in the stricter sense applicable to them, but still they are doing it in the, that, that way, like we can give some kind of leniency, but not to uh, like somebody is paying overtime or uh, uh, um, uh, that kind of thing. That's not a. Uh, yeah, Mr. Ganpati is waiting for a long time. Mr. Ganpati, please. You poor hun, you know. Salade hui jo. Yeah, good afternoon, my sir. Hello. Funny troll. Hello. Oh, really? Yeah, Mr. Ganpati, you are audible. You can carry on. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ganpati Bhujgaro. Somebody is talking in between. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I'm just muting everyone. Mr. Ganpati, you can carry on. Yeah, my name is Ganpati Appana Bhujgaro, uh, working in Shanti Forme Private Limited, a private limited company as a general manager. So we are uh, eligible for this uh, CSR equity from last three years. Okay, and uh, we are contributing some good amount uh, to this uh, noble cause. So we have taken a project of uh, construction of school. So is it uh, qualifiable for the CSR activity? Yes, I would assume it is qualifiable for your uh, this thing, but we have to put it in context. Like we, I think I would request you to develop a CSR policy, what we call a logic model, which uh, you know you can always get, get in touch with Sharath and me offline, and we can tell you what are all the things that you need to have it in a form of a documentation to make this a CSR project. Okay, because in uh, <clears throat> we have in place our CSR policy as a company. Uh, under that purview only, we are uh, operating this activity. Just I want to get yeah. it uh, clarified whether yeah, the contribution yeah, is uh, available under CSR. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. And see what uh, the point that Sharath made is at the lowest hanging fruit is a, a uh, what do you call Z gold. Okay, but if you get yeah. the Z gold done well. If you do huh. the Z gold, if you do your CSR activities as per the Z requirement, it is not only the thing that you can get. You it you it will you can really talk on many other levels also once you get this basic minimum met. 
for a CSR activity. Yeah, what is the benefit of this getting jet gold? But Sharad, uh, do you want to go yeah, to yeah, that? Sir, or, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sir, you put your number. I will ask someone to give a call and share it with you in detail. Okay, should I spell it? Yeah, yeah, you just put it in the uh, text box, your number. Somebody will contact okay. you. Yeah. Okay, okay, Take, fine, fine, fine. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. thank you, thank Ran you. Yeah, Mr. Ranjit Das, like, uh, would you like, uh, so you were unmuted earlier. Uh, you wanted to ask some question, Mr. Ranjit Das? Uh, no, it's okay. Thanks. I'm just. Uh, yeah, thank you. Mr. Jaju, please. Uh, say some MSME is providing uh, this education to nearby society or providing food to needy people or providing health care to the needy and surrounding areas to the society. And uh, he's, he has given evidences for that, but uh, he has not documented any policy. Uh, he has no committee, uh, no management review, no impact review. Then what should we consider? Doing CSR activity or not? Okay, just now like uh, first I will complete, <laughs> then you will add it. <laughs> okay, so, so there are two kind of MSMEs. One MSME is who is comes under CSR rules, statutory and regulatory requirements. If they are coming in that area, the answer will be different that Jotsna will give. And I will give the just jet perspective who is not coming under the CSR rule applicability. Means they are not having a 5 crore profits. They are not doing a more than 1000 crore turnover and they are not having a 500 crore network. Okay. Even I that kind of companies also. Yeah, yeah. So even that kind of companies also. Uh, it's not mandatory to have a CSR committee unless otherwise they are spending more than 50 lakh rupees. So committee mm -hmm. is not mandatory, but it's recommended because committee is easy. Then uh, every time like a uh, town management involved in that uh, particular activities, it helps to make the things uh, helpful. The policy is bare minimum. If the policy is not there, then they need to create a policy. It will be a non-conformity against the Z standard requirements. And the policy uh, is not there, it is a non-conformity. It's, 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 it's a clear-cut non-conformity. They need to create a policy. That's a bare minimum without that. Uh, uh, even though like many of MSM is doing uh, good things, they are not having the process. We need to guide them and support them. Uh, tell them like uh, they can easily create a policy. And uh, that's uh, one of the ideas like uh, having this uh, uh, discussion also here. So policy is like bare minimum they need to have. And uh, the next level is they may choose to put it in the website. In the policy, they may can give a uh, indication towards uh, SDG guidelines or uh, which uh, uh, that kind of is like additional thing, but it's not mandatory. And the impact mm -hmm. review also, uh, it's in the if they are coming under the CSR rules, if they are spending more than five crores in the CSR, then the uh, detailed third party implementing social impact assessment is mandatory. But somebody is spending a very lesser money. There is no need for go for a very detailed depth of like uh, uh, impact assessments. But at least they need to see some kind of review, at least one review in a year, management review. What are that money I am spending? What kind of impact is happening? First, I need, am I spending that money or not? Second, whatever that I have uh, set a target in a year, is it like where I am standing against my target? And uh, what is the actions which I am going to take uh, improvement in the next year? in my policy or in my activities or in my area. So some basics uh, uh, you need to look into that. Even if it is not in uh, uh, as a procedure, if they are able to showcase to you, like uh, these are all the actions we have, to, you have done and some, some kind of uh, things they can uh, share it with you, some records or some proof, you can accept that. But it uh, will be a I recommendation would, uh... or guidance. Just, just a minute, just a minute. But it will be a recommendation or guidance, but not non conformity yeah, uh, see, it's all guidance. Only whatever that written in the Z requirements, that only the mandatory. Nothing extra. Yeah, right. just one, please. See, I basically, when I go for such, uh, you know, gray areas where I have to take a stand on it, there's only one question that we all need to answer is as whose money is it and who are you answering, whether it is CSR or not? 
Yeah, so if it is your organization's money and you have to answer the board or the leadership as to why you spent it. Yeah, so there is there is an accountability for the money spent. And while Sharat and Z, you know, whatever be the minimum requirement from Z or whatever guidance or a compliance requirement, that's besides the point. But the essence, the intent is how accountable are you for the money being spent? I am doing great work in CSR, but I don't want to tell the whole world about it. Not right. Because you're accountable for the money that you're spending for the development of the society because it belongs to your organization. It belongs to your investors. It belongs to your shareholders. So accountability is a cornerstone for whatever you do. Right. Thank you. Thank you. So many, many MSMEs are proprietors. They are the owners and they are all in all. So they are accountable for themselves. <laughs> okay. no, but even yeah. for themselves, even for yeah. themselves, even for the yeah. loans they have taken, the banks, the investors. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Basu. Uh, uh, sir, what I, I, need, I need to lead. Yeah, yeah. Sharad, so, just know, mind, so just a second. Can I leave? Uh, yeah. We are going to be here for another... Aspect. Yeah, just a second, just a second. So we are going to be here for another 15, 20 minutes, whatever the time you are uh, want to be here, but uh, Josna to uh, leave sometime. So uh, yeah, I would like uh, also... to leave now. Yeah, if there is anything yeah, you yeah, want to yeah. particularly ask me, uh, I'm more than willing to ask. Yeah, so so anybody's like uh, any burning questions for uh, Josna before she is leaving? Yeah, just now I want to question. Um, so your organization mm -hmm. is donating uh, uh, some NGOs. And they're mm. producing, okay, we had um, donate XYZ amount and engineers carry out XYZ activities. But the mm. uh, organization is not keeping a track of such kind of activity. So is it a mandatory to have some kind of a proof either NGO is really spending such kind of a money or just they can show, okay, I spend X amount to this organization and this is my CSR activity. So how we need to so see this? In terms of, of in terms of the bare minimum, in terms of the bare minimum, and I'm going with what Sharat has been saying that MSME, Z, Gold, you know, you ha it's a it's a low hanging fruit. It, they're not asking you many many major compliances and all that stuff. So I would look at it from what is the minimum that you need to do, yeah, in terms of getting a Z certification, and what is it you as an organization would like to do to see that the money that you have spent is being used properly. See, at the end of the day, it is somebody's money which is growing. So, you know, you want, you're committed to a cause, you want to see that there's some benefit. You will go and tell the NGO that for the five, please give me six monthly reports, or please submit the bills, or please give me the utilization certificate, or whatever they, whatever they might be. So because it is Z, because it is MSME, the compliance requirements are quite easy to maintain. You can always do the bare minimum or you can go something more as a best practice. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Okay. Thank you for taking taking time and uh, being here and uh, uh, answering all the questions and sharing this uh, particular topic to everyone. And uh, it's a pleasure to having you here. And also, Thank it's you. a it's a learning for uh, each one of us. Thank you. And Thank uh, you. also, I recommend to be in the group so that, like in future, also if anybody wants to ask anything, they can get in touch with you. Sure, let's do that. We'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Sarajit. Yeah, yeah. So I am here. Like, uh, if anybody is, uh, so yeah, normally Sarajit. the session is over. I, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just a minute, sir. So yeah. one, somebody yeah. asked about the uh, recordings. So recording will be shared in the groups. So all of you will get the recordings. The presentations, like whatever that I have made, that uh, presentations we will share it in the group. You can get that also. I will check with Jyotsna if she is uh, sharing her presentation. I will put it that also in the group. Yeah, please carry on, sir. You are asking something. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, from the J's perspective, uh, the uh, parameter number 20. So what I understood that uh, the MSME should have a CSR policy, irrespective of it is a one-man company or 10-man company or 100-man company. That is a number one. Number one, we have to understand the intent of 
the activity the company is doing toward the CSR. That is the main without going so much of uh, the, uh, so much of uh, pros and cons, so much of statutory norms and things. For the JET certification, we first need to understand the intent of the company towards the expenditure the company is doing for CSR. And it should be a more or less a permanent project. These are the three parameters uh, we have to understand in the uh, during the assessment. Yeah, yeah, rightly said, sir. Like uh, it's a CSR policy, and uh, they have defined the action plans. Whether they are having a periodic uh, mechanism to review. This is the three yes. requirements of broadly. So and when we are the intent of, of, yeah, intent of intent? the intent. Yeah. Yeah, and also it changes from the context of the organization. If it is a micro, the context is different. If it is a small, it's also different. If it is a large, it's different. Again, if the MSME comes under the bracket of regulation, then it's a different. So some, yeah, some of the recommendations, as I shared, the CSR policy, uh, it's better like if they have the connection with the SDG and if they have a connection like uh, which activities they want to do it. And if they have a management committee, it's a... Uh, 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 CSR committee, it's uh, recommended but not mandatory. But uh, also, it's better like to put a target. Like, what is the target they are going to spend as a budget on the CSR? It may be like uh, as low as possible. Like, we can't push in like uh, why it's only thousand rupees or uh, what are that number? What are that MSME is claiming? It's absolutely fine because two percentage profit is only for the uh, companies who uh, meets that uh, criteria. Okay. And also they need to have a defined uh, action plans. Defined action plan means like yeah. whatever that way they have a uh, 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 writing or any internal meeting memo or internal mails, whatever that they, have, they are showing, it's absolutely fine. As long as it's it's there in written among uh, uh, their company uh, people. Another thing is what, uh, what Madam was telling, it should be more on uh, permanent project. But it's not one time they have issued someone like, 10,000 rupees or 20,000 rupees. She was telling you it should be more on permanent project. The amount may be 1,000 or 2,000. That is not the issue, but more or less it should be the permanent project that every year for that particular project they are giving something. Yeah, so so again, uh, here is like a one intent is how the impact is happening, how the uh, social impact, impact is, happening. is happening. So when the impact is happening, so it is recommended to have a longer term. But company has the freedom to review yearly and make whatever changes or core corrections they want to do. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank this you, was Mr. a big Basu. question because big yeah, question yeah. during our assessment, CSR yeah. was the main point. What to do? Very good, very good session. Thank you, sir. Like uh, we will share that presentation. There are some other checkpoints also there. And uh, when you okay, go to okay. that uh, ISO 26001 uh, documents, that also will give some of the ideas and everything, how to do that. So this can okay. be shared to MSMEs also. MSMEs, if somebody is interested, they can uh, uh, implement that. But that's not a mandatory. That's not a Z requirements. Okay, if uh, no other uh, questions, uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, Mr. Vishwanathaya, are you saying something? You are on mute if you are saying yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. unmuted. The one general question, sir, uh, from both for the uh, this, uh, this Z uh, and also to this. Uh, see, uh, the, uh, when uh, the application is made for gold or anything, we have discussed it many times also. Uh, how do we scrutinize for gold? Uh, because so many applications coming when we, we have audited also uh, through your organization and others also. Uh, if you go to the site, uh, nothing will be there. And the operator of gold. So from the Z organization side, Z side, from the CB side, the uh, assessing agency side, uh, can um, system can be developed to uh, scrutinize our uh, the applications before we go for our assessments to the uh, especially gold uh, certifications. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, asking these questions. Uh, we really understand like uh, when. Uh, uh, experts assessors like uh, experienced assessors when we want to contribute uh, to go to the msmes and uh, we want to spend like uh, two days with two people and uh, we found out like only there is no work there uh, like more than one hour and it's very mm. disappointing 
and uh, uh, it's also like sometimes like uh, irritates and uh, frustrate also like uh, what's happening here i fully get your experience uh, i fully... not only irritates not only irritates yeah. it doesn't justify the requirement <laughs> yeah 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 no, fully i fully agree that so there are couple of uh, recommendations from our company what we do is uh we normally uh, send the uh, z20 parameters to them uh, like guidance documents we also try to have a conversation with them this is the requirements like uh, are you ready with that uh, full and everything and uh, some of the organizations already prepaid the amount like for example uh, uh, when a uh, organization uh, applied for uh, uh, gold they already paid the amount so they have like only two uh, two choices they have one they contact a qci and uh, get back their money what that's the best option because they are not ready another option is like uh, they don't want to get back their money and uh, now this as a scheme owner uh, if somebody is paid customer is paid the money and we need to service them whether uh, they were uh, ready or not so that time we don't have any other choice even though we know that uh, there is no uh, single one hour work uh we go there and uh, our uh, assessor like normally we recommend we have like a uh, 8 to 8 hours 16 hours time if the msme is ready to listen us we will guide them and we will share them something what are the value addition we can add even though they might not get the gold certificate at least they can apply for a uh, uh, bronze and they can get and something what are the uh, uh, we might not consult them hand hold them but give the general ideas like uh, one or two hours in first day and uh, one or two hours next day if they are in receptive condition so it happens many a times and uh, now it started reducing now in the initial stage it was like a very very high in the before uh, april now in the last 3 4 months like uh, we hardly reach like a uh, 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 one one or two case at the maximum uh, now everybody understood and uh, um, so this this problem even uh, qci uh, aware about this particular problem Uh, so uh, as i audited uh, assess the units almost of the 30 units more than six units are like this <laughs> i fully understand sir sir <laughs> six units uh, from uh, rsj only we have done three or four uh, three units like this from other agency and the three units of the 20 30 units done almost six units we don't have any hours job there uh, going there for two days Uh, yeah i see uh, i feel very bad of myself how do i justify my uh, fees is there <laughs> <laughs> no no so don't worry about don't worry about that yeah, like no, uh, see, yeah, what uh, not, whatever it is that, sir see we should be yeah. when you go as an assessor we should be able yeah. to justify that we should be able to yeah. provide some uh, information now now yeah. what i was thinking sir is there any a way out at the uh, z level itself uh, to scrutinize the application or uh, say that at least for the gold level at least for the gold level so uh, so, so we can uh, we can identify we can identify yeah. through the profile when we yeah. see the profile somebody is micro somebody mm. is having less than 10 employees mm. uh, so that uh, only that immediately gives a red flag mm. yeah. so that, we can we can we can speak with them and we can understand like uh, are you really ready yeah Uh, that has to be checked up sir there's the only thing yeah. i just wanted to know because yeah. even for the, uh, some of the organizations we go they have applied for go, uh, silver but when you go there i really feel they could have applied for gold there are some yeah. other way also uh, perfectly yeah. uh, good organization i recommend them go for gold uh, like that also is there but yeah. the entire system i am uh, con- I mean coming to that is that we should develop a system of uh, scrutinizing at the before we go for a final audit at the desktop level or at the anywhere there should yeah. be some system should be uh, in place uh, at least to know whether uh, they really uh, ready for gold or not yeah sure sir i got your point like uh, we will see that like uh, how it can be improved we will also take it up with uh, qca also yes sir that is the uh, one thing i wanted yeah. to speak and i think we have spoken earlier also uh, yeah this respect yeah this is done sir other than that uh, yes sir is uh, only thing is uh, only uh, is coming to csr or technology development even technology development uh, the, is a gray area for a smaller organizations is a gray area for, to audit uh, and assess the technology development section is a very gray area a very yeah. small organization doesn't have any technology he says i have this uh, where is the question of technology development for me so yeah. uh, such, do a, a, come into picture when you go audit 
yeah so we are we are we are, yeah we are planning a couple of webinars so uh, we are planning like a uh, uh, natural resources and uh, technology upgradation so uh, like csr we are planning to get some kind of experts and uh, some kind of uh, areas like how it can be applied so that like uh, uh, everyone will get the uh, uh, ideas so even for this webinar we try to get back uh, many msmes to join who is like interested go for a goal but unfortunately uh, we are not got like many msmes like a few only joined here uh, yeah uh, mr basu you are having any questions your hand raised okay so anyone else no sir, no sir no sir yeah yeah thank you mr basu so thank you everyone thank you for uh, being here and uh, thank you for uh, asking uh, great questions with uh, jochna and uh, uh, discussing on this particular point it's privilege to be with you all and uh, thank you for uh, providing uh, your listening and uh, being here and uh, uh, let's work together to make our uh, msme ecosystems competitive and uh, be future ready Hello. thank you everyone before you leave sir yeah hello hello uh, thank yeah, you please Hello. Yeah, somebody is speaking. Uh, Jaji, yeah. Mr. Jaji. Hello, Anjit Das here. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Das. Yeah, I am fully in agreement with what Mr. Mr. Land said about this business of going and wasting two days. I, I, my suggestion is, why don't you have this intermediate uh, remote assessment before you go there? If, uh, in fact, it has been done away in the case of silver also. There was a, you know, a scope for for doing a remote assessment. that has been done away with uh so this is the policy decision like uh, uh msme department and uh, uh, scheme owners has taken so take they have up, found baby. like uh, they have found that uh, the quality of uh, uh, remote assessments uh, was not up to the mark and uh, the decision was taken because of the covid that time so it's better like if you go and uh, add value physically so that's the reason they have taken this decision that was the explanation given that time nay nee, nee, but i am totally in disagreement you go there waste you they've got nothing i have got an experience like that for a silver i go and find out that the guy is nothing and he's not even properly educated he cannot even understand what i'm talking about so this kind of waste is practice should be done away with i mean with uh, This is something the MSCB ministry and all need to discuss amongst themselves. Because 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 lot of funds are being given from the government side, sir. And the yeah. funds get yeah because that fund is being used for all of us. Yeah. So while while that is to be done as they're saying, uh, I still suggest that there should be a two tier assessment for gold uh, before you uh, a final assessment is there. If you a two tier assessment is built up. to be decided the higher uh, arcari as you said uh, qci is that has to be taken into confidence and then discussed uh, all the assessing bodies can meet together or maybe some auditors also and you qci can uh, have a modality specifically for gold sir when we go for gold we expect something uh, definitely higher than any other thing so yeah, when yeah. i go to the gold nothing is there i i feel very bad having come there and also you yes, uh, yeah, said some some of the uh, organization that doesn't know the even the terminology is also they will not be understanding yeah, yeah. the thing will be yeah. that no it's it's a very good point we will definitely take it up with uh, uh, qci so in the last scheme like uh, z1.0 scheme there was a desk of assessment and then uh, 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 physical assessment so that had given a different kind of uh, issues like uh, many companies was not able to clear the desk of assessment and uh, going for a physical so that time that was the one of the uh, limitation was highlighted so this time it made a uh, uh, desktop only for first five parameters like afterwards it's all uh, uh, taken away but we need to find a middle way how msme is also encouraged to apply and also uh, it's not like happening like something nothing is there so we need to find a way even yeah. in physical assessment sir I, I, as my own experience many organizations audited even after 60 days even after repeated uh, contacting them so that we can help also they don't come forward yeah yeah it's They're there not coming forward to that they don't answer yeah. at all yeah even we say that we will help you to close the uh, thing and they are not coming forward yeah yeah it's there it's everywhere like even in a uh, bronze like a uh, more than uh, almost 200 organization got rejected by our side 
even though our people are calling every day and uh, uh, trying to support them they don't want to uh, that that cases are there yeah, yeah they're there so because so of lack of knowledge yeah, yeah. So they don't do anything else. Simply they operate because somebody has recommended them to apply. So in yeah. such scenario, we should be able to screen them out. Yes. That's the main thing. There should be some screening. There's the, there's the funding can be saved. No, sir. A lot of money can be saved for the government of India also. The yeah. Government is spending a yeah. lot of money in that. Yeah. It should not become a fancy that I apply because somebody has told me to apply. Yeah. And yes, getting yeah, zero yeah. value. Yeah. Getting a very certificate is yeah. You please uh, that has to be taken, sir. You please sure, uh, sir. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. So, any other points, anyone else before closing? So, thank you, everyone. We have reached the end of the session. So, we are uh, closing the session. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for your uh, valuable inputs. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. And please do share the recording. Yes, sir. Sure. You will get that.